So before I start, how many of you have used Google Maps? Please raise your hand. Excellent. How many of you have used Google Earth? Excellent. So, you know, this is a big phenomena, which we, not just at Google, even my previous life when I used to work for uh, a telecom operator and uh, handset manufacturer. It's from Finland, Alexi, Nokia. I used to work for them. So, you know, one of the things which I realized uh, six years back, uh, Google Mac Maps was pretty recent. They had launched Maps. And uh, uh, I used to work in India. And I walked up to a bank and I said, hey, I'm like, you have millions of customers of yours. Uh, you know, you want certain inputs from them. You know, a lot of, uh, so they, can, why don't you integrate your map into, you know, this new Google Maps into your website? They were like, really, are you crazy? I said, well, I'm like, question was, what will they use Google Maps for? I said, well, use it as a branch or an ATM locator. You can publish your opening, closing hours, and maybe we can give you directions. So, you know, so that was a time, you know, just six years back. And since then, in 2013, you know, it's, it's been a revolution completely. And this revolution has come from consumers like yourselves. Traditionally, if we go, there have been enterprise technologies which were brought into the consumer world. But now, the time has come when consumers are more literate than the enterprise. They are using tools, some of them we saw, which are more powerful, which are more meaningful, and more valuable to society in general. And uh, at Google, we are experiencing the same thing. 20% of the search that you do when you use the Google search bar has some form of location element. As you can see on this slide, more and more smartphones, more and more data is being accessed on you know, your smartphones, on your tablets, then sitting there in the offices. There are organizations like yourselves who are using platforms, whether it could be Google Maps or any other platform, for building various crowdsourcing techniques. We heard Stephanie talk about using one such platform, you know, where she, she, she talked a lot about geocoding, geolocation API, how maps were used in, you know, the crowdsourcing uh, technologies. So this is really what even we are experiencing. And uh, what I'm talking about today is how this consumer technology can be brought into the enterprise world and you can use it as another crowdsourcing technique for internally within your organization, I'm going to talk through a use case, and externally for your customers. How you can leverage on these consumer technologies and really create a meaningful and a powerful impact within your organization. Uh, this is a report which was published by Boston Consultancy Group in January. Location is getting increasingly more important in everyone's life, whether it's consumer or enterprise. It's a $270 billion industry, as per them, every year. It's growing at a phenomenal rate of 30%. It's, you know, a lot of people are actually calling it as a sun, next sunrise industry. There are consumers like us who you know, whenever, we, whenever I go to a new country, I always end up using maps because I, I use public transit quite a number of times because uh, I see it more effective. Consumers have saved 1.1 billion hours. They've saved $4.9 billion on fuel alone. So imagine if all this, you can bring it into your, whether your personal or professional environment. There is unbelievable amount of information which is there today. As the world is getting more and more social, you have great platforms, you know, great social media which is available. If you, work, if you go, like a telecom company, I keep saying, you know, I've come from the telco background, I'm giving you more examples, but a telecom company is one place where they have terabytes and terabytes of data which has consumer pattern. They know who you call, when you call, for how long do you call, what's the kind of data you access, what are the kind of websites you go to. That's the amount of data they have. The same thing is there with the governments. 
you have information about voters, you have information about who's doing what, you have information about their financial performance and everything. But the biggest challenge is how do you manage this data? For that, you spend millions and millions of dollars in building infrastructure, which could be in the form of data centers, it could be in the form of servers, it could be in the form of building data warehousing and business intelligence solutions. Then another biggest challenge, assuming you've sorted this, all this out, the biggest challenge is if I work for a bank, I'm sitting with a high net worth individual customer, I have to reference him, hey, within your condo itself in Singapore, these are the type of HNIs and these are the kind of guys who are using you know, these kind of investments. So suddenly, it comes about location, which going back, as I said, location is getting increasingly more relevant in any form of life. Now, the moment I'm able to tell them, okay, five of your friends, who live around your area are already my customers. Imagine as a sales guy, how great a tool it becomes for me. Assuming I've thought, you know, I have this information, most of you have this information. But the biggest importance is how do you get that information accessible to an individual? You need to have certain tools which you know how to, you don't want to be trained. One of the reasons why biggest implementations fail in any organization, I'm talking about especially software implementations, is they're complex. People don't want to use. You love using, you know, you love going to Facebook. You love accessing Gmail. A lot of you said you want to use Google Maps. So imagine if, you know, whether you're building a website or you're building a solution or doing even a crowdsourcing or any form of thing. Imagine if such tools are part of your solution, the kind of impact you'll have. So this is what I'm talking about. Everything is getting georeference, and you know the solutions which you need to build. Okay, let me just take a step back. It's a proven statistic. I'm not sure which report did I read it, but 30% of the people like yourselves actually carry your own devices at work. So organizations are expecting or employees are expecting to carry the consumer technologies, they're expecting enterprise like yourself will be using the consumer tools. And, uh, you know, this is what we have. We have two different forms of, so, you know, I'm going to walk you through a couple of crowdsourcing use cases and a couple of enterprise use cases. At Google, a lot of you have used the maps. A lot of it is free, but we do have the business version where you can actually use Google geospatial technologies for your businesses. This is one use case which you have. It's, it's a company called as Ergon Energy. It's uh, one of the largest utility companies based out of Queensland. One of the largest challenges they had was, uh, you know, they had 150,000 square kilometer of utility network and trees were outgrowing the utility poles causing disruption of power supply. And they were losing millions and millions and millions of dollars because of this power disruption. And the second largest challenge was they had huge amount of workforce who used to actually go in the forests to capture the growth of the tree, what's the height of the tree. Then they used to have some analysis, okay, when will tree actually outgrow a utility pole? So the trick was how do we get these people to reach there? They were also going there clicking a lot of pictures through which they're calculating, okay, today the tree height is 20 meters. After three years or three months, the height is going to be 21 meters. The utility pole is 22 meters. So, you know, when should we go and start trimming the trees or, you know, when is the disruption going to happen? So, what they did was they hired these private drones and they flew it all over the state of Queensland and they collected huge amount of aerial imagery. And that they combined with the street data they had onto Google Maps and through that they could predict when will the tree outgrow the utility pole and when will the power disruption happen. Through that alone they saved 60 million dollars in a year. So th this was something which they could have never done had they not adapted the consumer technology which people like us are using. Because the, as I said, going back, the biggest challenge was how do you train the guys when they are on the field to capture that location information. But they knew how to use Google Maps so they could you know, uh, use it. This is another example about a utility company, again, a water company, 
based out of uh, UK. They had a pretty old, uh, uh, you know, water pipeline network across UK, and one of the biggest challenges they had was, uh, you know, the the water pipes were leaking. You know, there were severe disruptions, so they had thousands of technical engineers who were going on the field trying to rectify the data. So this was a great example of how crowdsourcing was done because people change jobs pretty frequent these days. Uh, you know, there is separate amount kind of skill set which is required for every different kind of a leakage or every different kind of a problem. So what all these engineers have started doing is they go to a place where they fix this particular problem, they click a picture, they geotag a picture, they write the incident report, what happened, they push it out onto their network and next time if there is another engineer going, he can have the look at the entire history or the entire issue that happened and the entire incidents that have happened. That will give him some sense, okay, what's really the problem and, you know, this is some form of a crowdsourcing which you can see that they used uh, with an enterprise. One of the biggest reasons why Google Maps has been so successful is not because, you know, we have one site called as maps.google.com, but it's because there are a million developers like yourselves or people like yourselves who have integrated Google Maps onto their websites or within their entire systems. Google Maps wouldn't have been there had it not been for these million people who would have created innovative, visionary solutions. Uh, again, going back to one of the examples of Stephanie, what she presented, the map wasn't Google. We would have loved to have it Google, but uh, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there are there are millions such different cases. I've just presented two to you. So so these are you know certain tools which I strongly encourage. You know, if you're building different forms of crowdsourcing, even in the case of uh, uh, the solution that you presented. Uh, Alexi on Finland. Somewhere, if, you know, it was again, you, I heard you talk about, I think you talked about location at least eight or ten times during your 20 minutes uh, presentation. So, this is the power that you have in building any form of tool, whether it's a mobile application, whether it's a website, whether it's an internal requirement, whether it's a consumer app, anything. If you can integrate such powerful tools, People are looking for location. So, had we done all this by ourselves without these million developers, it would have taken us almost like 20,000 years to build so many different solutions. So, basically this is, you know, a short kind of uh, information I had to share with you that while you, all of you are building innovative solutions, all of you are creating great solutions. Please do not discount the power of location and try and maximize on, on this particular area. With that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you.